one of the experiences in talking to parents over the years being that when I talk about the advantages of bilingualism, somebody from the audience will always ask the question, OK, so what are the disadvantages? And in the book, I've been quite open and honest and shared what are the issues and the problems that arise with bilingual children. And so in terms of disadvantages, I think, first of all, there's no such thing as a trouble-free child. Um, all children have problems, and that can include with bilinguals language problems. But what I need to stress is that don't immediately rush to bilingualism as being the cause of a language problem or an educational problem. Many parents and teachers, doctors, other professionals, tend to rush to bilingualism as the cause of a problem, um, like stuttering or language delay. It doesn't have to be, and in the book I thoroughly explore cases where this is and is not the case. What is for sure is that a disadvantage can be the amount of parental effort uh, that is, needs to be put in. It's not always simple and straightforward. For some parents it is. It's, it's something that's natural and easy. For other parents, they have to work out how to uh, use the two languages in the family situation, particularly to make sure that one language has enough experience and develops well. So there is parental effort, and some parents, I know, find that hard going. Many do not. I think almost all parents who kept at it and kept, stayed on for the rest of the course have found that the outcome, a child with two well-developed languages, is a wonderful, wonderful thing and well worth the effort. A very rare um, disadvantage is when neither language is particularly well developed. And while this is mentioned in the literature, it is incredibly rare for this to occur. Most children did do develop at least one language really well. But there is this slight danger in a very few cases of neither language being sufficiently developed when it comes to going to school and being able to work in the sort of the higher language that a school demands. If there is a disadvantage that is discussed amongst academics quite frequently, it is the issue of identity. If somebody has two languages, for example, French and English, well, does, does the child regard themselves as being English or French or Anglo-French or even European? Um, and in what kind of strength and combination? Now, for many children, having dual identities or hyphenated identities is no problem whatsoever. They can even enjoy um, being both British and Finnish or uh, having a United States identity and a Puerto Rican identity. For a few, though, there can be identity crises. There can be tensions in identity. This particularly occurs with uh, immigrants and uh, that then needs care. It also, I think, changes over a lifetime. Just as languages are never absolutely equal or never the same over a lifetime, same with identity. Identity changes and children become adjusted to having a hyphenated identity, being sometimes both French and English, of uh, having dual identity, multiple identity, and uh, being slightly different people in different circumstances according to who they're with, and then actually enjoy and celebrate that. But there is the issue of identity.